Good morning and welcome to Frieden's Lutheran Church in Center Valley on this Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of Holy Week. Today, we will not only hear the gospel reading where Jesus triumphantly enters Jerusalem, but we will also hear of his passion, the events that took place, which ultimately led to his crucifixion. However, we know that's not the end of the story, so continue to tune in next week. For Holy Week, we are still doing virtual services. On Monday, Thursday, I will be leading the worship service at New Jerusalem. And you are certainly invited to tune in at their website, newjerlc.org. Org. The service will premiere at 7 o'clock on Thursday evening. And similarly, we will have Good Friday service here at Freedens. Again, that is also a virtual online service. So you can tune in to our website, FreedensCenterValley.com. And then the good news, not we are reopening for Easter Sunday, April 4th, for in-person worship. Our service begins at 8.30 in the morning, and we will joyously celebrate Christ's resurrection and the promise of new life that he gives. We will also be holding an outside coffee hour following the worship as long as Mother Nature cooperates with us. But we look forward to welcoming you all. Again, if you are not comfortable coming in person, we respect that. And we will continue to stream the services online. For your convenience, you may watch them at home with your family. Thank you for being here. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. They then brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who will carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please know, family members, 
congregation members, palms are available for you to take for your Palm Sunday celebration. They will be in a bucket outside the red doors on Saucon Valley Road. Please feel free to come by and take some for yourselves, your neighbors and family members for your Palm Sunday celebration. The first reading for Palm Sunday is recorded in the book of Isaiah, the 50th chapter, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Psalm 31, read responsively. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second reading is recorded in the book of Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord, according to the 14th and 15th chapters of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor but they scolded her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? <coughs> so Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. <coughs> so the disciples set out and went to the city and he found and found everything as Jesus had told them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the 12. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to, one, say to him, one after the other, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread in the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, 
This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows thrice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you might not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and take your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. <coughs> so when he came, Judas went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, <coughs> and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. <coughs> Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. <coughs> and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. 
Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. <clears throat> Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took, o took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. And at that moment, the cock crowed for a second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man that you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole co cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! 
And they struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. <clears throat> and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, ha ha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way, he breathed his last. He said, truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance, among them Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. They used to follow him, provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning, I'd like to share a message with you by the Reverend T. 
Timothy, Timothy Ayers. You have heard the Palm Sunday story before, and maybe you thought, like I did, that this is the exact opposite of the story of Good Friday. All the people were waving palms, throwing their cloaks, coats, wraps, and Ralph Lauren sweaters on the pathways before Christ. It looked like someone had emptied the Salvation Army shed into the streets. People were cheering, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd ran to the palm trees and cut fronds off of them and laid them before Jesus as he approached on a foal of a donkey. Yay, Jesus, you are the Messiah. Yay, Jesus, we saw you raise the dead. Yay, Jesus, you've come to save us. Hosanna, Hosanna. But that was Palm Sunday and Friday's coming. On Friday, that same group of people would stand and scream, crucify him, crucify him. The same group that yelled Hosanna would five days later scream out for his blood. They would scream out for him to be nailed to a cross. Does that surprise you? Does that shock you? Jesus warned his disciples that this is the way it would be. He had told them who he was. He revealed that he was the Messiah and he did miracles to prove it. In the crowd that formed around his triumphant entry into Jerusalem were religious leaders, the Pharisees, who felt threatened by his perceived power. There was another group who ran to the streets, stripping off their coats, grabbing palms, and throwing them at Jesus' feet. They stood there shouting their hosannas, those who had witnessed Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. They may have even seen him make dinner for everyone out of five loaves of bread and a couple of fish but they ultimately bowed down to the pressure of the authorities and soon changed their tunes. Yes, it was Palm Sunday, but Friday was coming. In that crowd, there were also people who heard God's word and it transformed their lives. It not only transformed their lives on Sunday when they sincerely yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but it also transformed their lives on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They saw hope and a future. They found relief and salvation in this man who was the Messiah. Then on Friday, they saw him judged and tried before Pontius Pilate. On Friday, they saw the soldiers beat him with a whip and press a crown of thorns into his head until blood rolled like tiny rivers down his face. On Friday, they saw him carry a heavy cross through town and up a hill known as the Place of the Skull. On Friday, they watched as his skin was pierced, as he was nailed to a cross. On Friday, their lives had been ruined. On Friday, their faith had been stripped away from them. On Friday, their trust and belief was rocked as they watched him being placed into a tomb. On Friday, they wept great, bitter tears as the stone was rolled in front of it. Yes, they were crushed on Friday. Hope was lost on Friday. Everything they screamed for on Palm Sunday was true, but now their faith was pierced 
by the three nails and dashed on the sharp edges of a stony grave. And then like a gentle breeze, a voice somewhere from the sky or maybe from the corner or maybe from within, a voice as powerful and as soothing as if it came straight from God's mouth to their ears, whispered, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Amen. Let us now unite in the profession of our faith by using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility, O Lord. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. 
redeem your creation awaiting resurrection, restore lost habitats and endangered species, create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change, grant relief from natural disasters, and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world, and all nations instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice, sustain soldiers, and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked, bullied, or made into targets of hatred. Accompany all who suffer and grant respite and renewal to them. This day we lift up before you, O Lord, Bill B., Leona, Darwin and Hunter, Hope, Rick H., Bill H., Mike, Dennis, Ginny, Pat, Charlie, Bonnie, and Rick W., as well as all others within our circle of care. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. O Lord, you called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death. Those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may now prepare your communion elements to be received. If you have the prepackaged ones, you may unseal your wafer at this time. The body of Christ given for you. And I invite you to prepare your cup.
the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace and love now and always. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord and one another in love. Thanks be to God.